Wisdom, the final frontier to true knowledge. Welcome to Wisdom Trek, where our mission is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Hello, my friend. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your captain on our journey to increase wisdom and create a living legacy. Thank you for joining us today as we explore wisdom on our second millennium of podcast. This is day 1046 of our trek, and it is Wisdom Wednesday. Creating a biblical worldview is important in order to have a proper perspective on today's current events. To establish a biblical worldview, it is required that we also have a proper understanding of God's Word. Especially in our Western cultures, we do not fully understand the scriptures from the mindset and the culture of the authors. In order to help us all have a better understanding of some of the more obscure passages in God's words, we are investing Wisdom Wednesday reviewing a series of essays from one of today's most prominent Hebrew scholars, Dr. Michael S. Heiser. He has compiled these essays into a book titled, I Dare You Not to Bore Me with the Bible. The father of the Israelites, Abraham, lived 2,000 years before Christ came to earth to dwell with us as a human. How could Abraham possibly have met Christ? In today's essay, we will explore the passage that shows when Abraham met Jesus. Some of the most startling things in the Bible are hidden in plain sight. Galatians chapter 3 verse 8 is a case in point. Amid the predictable focus on law, grace, and the gospel, Paul blindsides us with this verse. And it says, What more? The scripture looked forward to the time when God would make the Gentiles right in his sight because of their faith. God proclaimed the good news to Abraham long ago when he said, All nations will be blessed through you. But Abraham lived 2,000 years before Christ. There is nothing about the crucified Savior in the stories about Abraham. What was Paul thinking? To correctly process Galatians chapter 3, verse 8, we need to think about the gospel in different terms. We typically think about the gospel in terms of the crucified Savior, Jesus, dying for our sins. But the work of Christ was just a means to accomplish what God sought. God wanted a sinless, holy, human family. The sacrifice of Jesus, who was fully God and fully human, was the necessary mechanism to achieve the larger goal. The gospel was God's plan to become a man so he could have the holy, human family. Could Abraham really have grasped that? God's decision to produce his family through Abraham is described in Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 3. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. Paul quoted part of that passage in Galatians chapter 3, verse 8. Paul believed that as a result of that divine encounter, Abraham came away with the knowledge of the gospel. God would become man to provide a means for a human family. Even more than that, Abraham discerned that he and his offspring, which didn't yet exist and which seemingly could never exist, was a critical part of that plan. Was Paul reading a different Old Testament than us? No. Paul got his information about the good news where all the gospel writers did, which was Jesus, Galatians chapter 1 verse 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 8. If John chapter 8 verse 56 is any indication, Jesus happened to be an authority on Abraham's divine encounter with God when he said, Your father Abraham rejoiced as he looked forward to my coming. He saw it and was glad. The Jews listening to Jesus immediately understood him to mean that he had met Abraham. That is why they said in the next verse, John chapter 8, verse 57, The people said, You aren't even 50 years old. How can you say you have seen Abraham? They were actually right on both counts. We know that John referred to Jesus as the Word in John chapter 1, verse 1. Less well known is that the word of the Lord is at times an Old Testament description of the embodied God of Israel. For example, Jeremiah was visited by the word of the Lord, Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 2 through 4, whom he called O Sovereign Lord in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 6. The Lord God, the word, is embodied in human form in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9 as it reads, 
Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, Look, I have put my words in your mouth. There are other such passages in the Old Testament, one of them being Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, where the covenant promises between God and Abraham were sealed, which reads, Sometime later, the Lord spoke to Abram in a vision and said, Do not be afraid, Abram, for I will protect you and your reward will be great. Notice in this verse it was in a vision. But in Genesis chapter 12, verse 7, which is a passage Paul quoted in Galatians chapter 3, has the same language but with the physical component. And this is how it reads. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. And Abraham built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord whom had appeared to him. And we see that Paul wasn't out of his mind. Abraham had met the word. And through that encounter, he understood the salvation of God. And that will conclude our essay for this week. Next Wisdom Wednesday, we will continue with the New Testament as we look at Dr. Heiser's next essay titled, How Many Times Is Jesus Coming Back? I believe that you'll find this another interesting topic to consider as we build our biblical worldview. Tomorrow, we will continue with a three-minute humor nugget that will provide you with a bit of cheer, which will help you to lighten up and live a rich and satisfying life. So encourage your friends and family to join us and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 1,045 treks or read the Wisdom Journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. And I encourage you to subscribe to Wisdom Trek on your favorite podcast player so that each day's truck will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally. Learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.